Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got to talk about the 40th anniversary of A Nightmare on Elm Street and the interview that ComicBook.com had with Robert Englund and Heather Langenkamp and all the interesting things that were said. So let's jump right into it. All right, so we have to talk about an interview that actually took place between comicbook.com, Heather Langenkamp, and Robert England, because it is very interesting. It's not huge news, but some of the things they said I found kind of interesting, and I've heard a lot of people also reporting on this, and that excites me as well. Now, first off, the reason for this interview is that Nightmare on Elm Street is going to go digital on October 1st, and on 4K UHD on October 15th. And that is huge news for fans who know that this is important. This is something that's exciting to a lot of fans. This is actually kind of the thing. And this is happening because it is also the 40th anniversary of Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street is 40 years old. It's still being talked about today, just like it was being talked about all those years ago, as the house that Freddie built. New Line Cinema was the house that Freddie built, and it has come a long way. Because people are still, to this day, talking about the future of the Nightmare on Elm Street series, and still equally ex excited for every new Thing that they hear. And this is actually proof of that because I've seen a lot of people already today talking about this, pondering about it, and it is interesting. It is very telling because the people over at comicbook.com interviewed Heather Langenkamp and Robert England, and they asked a few interesting questions regarding the future of this franchise. First off, you know, they gave a little bit of the normal questions, like asking Robert England if there's one question that he wishes people wouldn't ask him anymore, if he got tired of answering from fans. And the question he said is, well, I get tired of answering the question about how long does it take to put on the makeup. And I get that, because putting on that makeup took a long time, and... Sure, they may have cut it down an hour or two in some of the instances, but overall, it was a grueling process to put on the makeup. And if you know anything about FX, you actually know that putting on that latex makeup, putting on any type of makeup on actors and prosthetics actually does take a lot of time and it's very hard on the actor themselves. But the more important question that he asked was... I know you mentioned being physically done playing Freddy, but have there ever been talks about doing an R-rated animated film where the two of you could voice Freddy and Nancy? And this is what's got fans going really crazy. It's got them talking because Robert Englund said, well, that's a great idea. Let's go. Let's, you know, let's go for it. Let's have lunch. And... And yeah, that is a great idea. That is a really great idea to think about. Then they talked about the possibility of Freddie working in today's era with social media and technology. And could Freddie be the same threat level that he was? Heather Langenkamp actually pondered that it would just be meme worthy that the second that he tried to scare anybody, there would be memes all over the place and he couldn't be scary. Then, Robert England said, I love the technology being used as a tool in the horror narrative. I think I'm a sucker for that. I just think there's probably a better way to do that than with the mythology of A Nightmare on Elm Street. You could almost do a retro. I would almost like to see a prequel to Nightmare on Elm Street where we see Freddy go to jail, go to court, a courtroom drama, he gets off, and the lawyers could be really interesting characters, could be really sleazy. 
what's it called? Ambulance chasers? And you get some good character actors to play the lawyers. Freddy gets off. He gloats on the courthouse steps. He's not Freddy yet. He's not burned yet. And whoever that person is, we get more insight into his wife and child and what a twisted soul he is. And make it a little retro. Maybe set it in the 70s, late 70s or mid 70s in a suburban world where there's a sleazy disco down at the corner or something. He goes, I could see that happening. So that's kind of what was talked about there. And it's actually not that bad of an idea to do something in that regard. Doing a Freddy animated adult movie doesn't sound like that bad of an idea. You could absolutely do that. Also, for that matter, what about an animated TV series? What about that? An animated Freddy Krueger series is not the most horrible idea. I mean, if you could do a Chucky series, maybe you can put Freddy in an animated series. Maybe you can, and it could work. Sure, it's not going to have the same level of scary, but fans are nostalgic, and we love seeing Robert England as Freddy Krueger. And if the only way we're going to get that is for him to be voicing Freddy Krueger in an adult animated Nightmare on Elm Street, I think a lot of people would be down with it. And this idea of a prequel 70s movie doesn't sound that bad either. It kind of gives a lot of Rob Zombie-esque vibes. You know, that whole thing where Rob Zombie gave us a brief look at what happened before that faithful Halloween night. I think that sounds amazing. That could be something that's fun to do if you had the right writers and you did it the right way. That could totally work in the context of what we want out of Freddy Krueger. You could make the argument that, yeah, you did have a Freddy Krueger sort of look at the prequel. We've seen his origin a million times. But if you gave someone who had that vision, the opportunity to do a prequel in that vein, that might actually really be something that's cool. However, I'm going to propose something here because this news does excite me on some level and it is getting closer to Halloween and we're starting to kind of think about these movies a lot more and we're pondering what would work and what wouldn't work and of course we all want a new Freddy Krueger movie. But a lot of people say that Robert England is legitimately the only person that can play Freddy Krueger and that's fine. If you are one of those people that believe that, that is fine. I personally think they could recast him if done with the right person and they could legitimately get away with it. However, I propose another strategy. AI technology is becoming so advanced that you can look at a person and not even know if you are looking at the exact person. You could be looking at an AI person on your screen and never even know they were AI generated. So in that regard, wouldn't it be kind of cool in a way if all of a sudden you had a new Nightmare on Elm Street series, but instead of having some other actor play it, they digitally put Robert England in the role of Freddy Krueger. Robert England could then voice Freddy Krueger for the foreseeable future. And that's not all. You might have heard recently that we lost the actor who played Darth Vader, or at least did the voice of Darth Vader, James Earl Jones. And with James Earl Jones actually being lost to us, it kind of is a sad thing. But his voice will live on in projects. I believe I had read that he sold his voice and the rights of his voice to the companies. So yeah, you could do that. And there's also talk that Bruce Willis, who was no longer able to act, had actually sold his likeness to companies. They can use his likeness in any way that they want. And that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all for fans of that actor. If, if they're getting compensated properly to do these things, then I'm a thousand percent down for it. That is what makes the AI element of it kind of a loose cannon because actors aren't really 
able to be compensated for things they didn't do. It's a negotiation process that's been ongoing and one of the biggest elements of the recent strikes that postponed so many movies that were supposed to be out already. And that's kind of where we're at. So I like this idea that they do an animated series or if Robert England is getting the proper compensation even if they want to put him as an AI character and just use Robert England's look for Freddy Krueger while having him actually voice the character in a new and exciting ways, I think I'm down for that as well. So this interview was interesting and it is very cool that we are getting a digital copy of Nightmare on Elm Street that is going to be re-released. The anniversary is now and I couldn't be more excited. But that is where I'm going to leave it off to you guys. What do you guys think about all of this? Do you like the idea that you that you might have some animated series with Robert England? Does that excite you? Would you be down for that if they did that? Would you be more down for a prequel as Robert England suggested to the interviewer that set like in the 70s where there's a sleazy disco and Freddy isn't Freddy yet? What types of things are you down for in terms of this series going forward? Or would you simply like to see them recast? Or do you like my idea that maybe they could, for the right compensation for the actor, actually have Robert England be eternally Freddy Krueger? As always, we want to hear from you guys. Don't forget to leave us that comment in the comment box below letting us know what you think. Don't forget to share this video with all of your friends. They're going to want to be a part of this crazy conversation as well. Then make sure you hit that like button. It's free. It helps the channel and we appreciate it. Miko says we need more subscribers. And look at this face. You don't want to disappoint Miko. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You know you want to. And while you're down there, hit that notification bell as well. So you don't miss a single video we do. Then friends, at the end of the day, I know it. You know it. And Miko knows it. Fandom is family.